Welcome back to the Miraculous Mamas podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Joy, and we believe in empowering people through storytelling and education. If you missed last week's episode, go back and listen to it because Dr. Sterling is amazing. She is an OBGYN with just like the most amazing heart for women and wanting them to feel heard and validated in their experiences. And we just have such a great conversation. This week, I am excited to talk about something that we haven't really done on here before. We did have on um, the non-toxic munchkin, which was fun to talk about uh, toxins in our home, but we dive a little bit deeper and from a different angle today with uh, Deborah Demare. Uh, she is the founder founder and owner of the award-winning humane design firm, Demare Design, and she specializes in like cruelty-free, humanely sourced um, like vegan design and, um, and with like nurseries and kids doing wellness and sensory environments and sustainable sourcing. And she just has such a passion for humane interiors, interiors. And, uh, she (laughs) informs me of a lot of different things today that I didn't know and some changes in our home that we need to make. So, um, I really, didn't know a lot of the things that we talked about today. So um, I'm excited to to share it with you. Next week, we are having a whole podcast on joy and then it's Thanksgiving week. So I thought that the episode on joy is good timing because of Thanksgiving and just, I feel like this time of year, I mean, for me, brings me tons of joy. I love the holidays. For other people, not so much. And uh, I'm trying to learn how to just keep my cup full um, to learn how to tap into my joy. So the conversation next week is definitely a must hear. All right, we are going to dive into the episode. Before we do, make sure that you are subscribed uh, to the podcast wherever you listen, that you leave us a review, let us know what your favorite episode was, reach out, let me know who you want to hear, what topics you want to hear, and um, and make sure that you are sharing the podcast. All right, let's dive in. All right, everyone, I have Deborah DeMare here, and I'm super excited to talk to her. She is known as Vegan Design. She's passionate about helping people live non-toxic lifestyles through uh, their home, which I feel like a lot of people hear a lot about like getting toxins out of your food or maybe starting to think about what you're putting on your skin. But there's so much in our homes that we are unaware of. And a lot of that is also in the things that we put on our baby registry or our Christmas lists or whatever it is. So I'm so excited to be here with Deborah today and talking to her and just um, getting some of her expertise and advice to help us live um, just more non-toxic, safer lives. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. My pleasure. I'm so excited that you're here. I would love to hear how you got into all of this. Uh How I got into all this. Well, first, let me just preface this by I have four children and they're all grown now. They're adults. So one one set of twins and two others. So, um, it, and I always say, if I knew then what I knew now, wow, would I have done things differently? Um, but I've been designing now about 20 years. And um, my business also came about organically. I do not have any licensing, no accreditation, nothing. It just kind of started when my, my twins went to school. I was a full-time mom and I wanted to start working part-time. So I looked into all these different businesses, and during this time, a very good friend of mine said, can you help me decorate my dining room and living room? And I said, sure. And before I knew it, her neighbor was calling, the neighbor's cousin, the neighbor's sister, and I had all these people uh, who wanted me to help them decorate spaces. And that was many years ago, and I feel very fortunate because I just kind of like fell into it, and it it grew. And I... You know, I've done projects now everywhere, all over the world, and it's it's been really exciting. Um, so that's how I kind of fell into design. Um, I learned the hardware, made tons of mistakes, but you know, you learn from your mistakes. Uh, fail smart, like I always say. <laughs> um, so how I became a non toxic and cruelty free um, designer uh, was that. My family and I really are very passionate about animals. Um, Right now I'm talking to you, Elizabeth, and my dog is under the chair. Hopefully he won't bark. Um, But our our pets are really a very strong part of our lives. And 
I'm also very involved with animal rights. I'm, I'm involved with PETA. I'm on the board of Farm Sanctuary. And, you know, that is what we do. Our, that is where I get my joy from working on helping save animals. And so all these years I was designing spaces like most that have wool and leather and fur and down. And, and I always say like, you know, I guess you have to be ready for change because I like to believe I'm not completely ignorant. So I had to think that, hey, that fur pillow is coming from somewhere, but I guess I wasn't ready for change, right? You have to be mm-hmm. ready. And one day I finally opened up a video that came on my feed that was always coming on my feed because I'm involved with PETA on dog leather. And I opened it. And that was literally the turning point for me. I was like, I cannot do this anymore. Um, Even though leather comes from all kinds of animals, most of us know that it comes from cows. However, leather also comes from dogs and cats and raccoon skins, raccoons and seals and kangaroos known as K-leather. And um, that video, I guess, because of our connection to dogs, right? More than cows, Mm -hmm. most of us really affected me. And that was the day that I declared that I am no longer using anything animal-based in my business. And it was quite a learning curve for me because really when I think about it, almost every room that you do in a space contains something made with animals in most homes and most offices. And as I start to learn and understand and create more sources for myself and resources and so on and work with vendors and tell them now my needs have changed, I really say I've an, I entered a rabbit hole because I very quickly learned it was not just about animals, saving animals. It was about the planet, the environment, and it was about children laborers and adult laborers. And ultimately, it was about our health. Mm -hmm. So animal-based materials and furniture and decor are laden with chemicals because they were once on a living, breathing animal. So how do they stay How do they not disintegrate? Uh, Leather has over 250 chemicals in it. Lead, chromium, arsenic. One third of a fabric's weight is chemicals. So if you weigh 100 pounds, 33 pounds of you would be chemicals if you were a fabric. I mean, the statistics are crazy. There's over 80,000 chemicals approved for the textiles industry, and less than 1% of them have been tested. There is so much corruption, like so many things in this world within within the um, decor industry, within the textiles industry, that it's despicable. And um, it's unethical, and it's very, very, very dangerous for us to be surrounding ourselves with all these chemicals. So that's how I kind of got into it. And what happened was very interesting. I started getting emails from consumers, from families, from just regular people and designers asking me all these questions. Where can I get this fabric? Where can I find this? Tell me about this. Because no, it was, I was kind of the pioneer of this without me even realizing it. Mm -hmm. And so that's how vegandesign.org came about because my, my main company is Damari Design, which is traditional design, of course, um, cruelty-free and non-toxic, but that's how Vegan Design came about. And we developed a, a course on cruelty-free and healthy design. And we just developed our second course, um, how to decorate nurseries beautifully that are non-toxic and cruelty-free. So it's, it's been really, um, really wonderful and interesting. And I, and I've met so many wonderful, fabulous people, someone like yourself, you know, I never would have met you and, and it's been great. And it's been a constant, I'm constantly learning. There's not a day that goes by that I do not learn something because it's, as I say, it was entering a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. We are going to take a quick break from the episode to talk about something that is so annoying. Have you started a free trial and then forgot to cancel it? So then you're just getting billed and then you continue to stop canceling it uh, because you forget or you sign up for a subscription and you're like, yeah, I'm just going to use it for this thing, blah, blah, blah. And then again, you forget and then you see it later on your credit card and you're like, oh, I need to cancel that. 
And you continue to forget. And the thing is, we don't see, we just see like the small monthly amount that maybe you're getting charged, but not how much you're actually wasting that year on all of these. And that's where True Bill enters the picture. True Bill is a new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with True Bill, which is huge. That's like all of your Christmas money. <laughs> and because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. You just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap and their concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted things that you have signed up for so that you don't have to deal with it. <laughs> there's like, and I've been there where there's just like these sites that make it so hard to cancel. And so then you're emailing somebody and it's just like, oh my gosh, such a headache. And Truebill just takes all of that away from you. They have over 2 million users and have helped them save over a hundred million dollars. Like Matthew B who said in a matter of seconds, I saved $660 for one year on my direct TV bill. I saved 120 on my Sirius XM bill and 840 on my car insurance. That's over $1,500. So don't fall for su- subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash mamas. Go right now, truebill.com slash mamas. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash mamas. Now back to the episode. I feel like there's so many things like I was saying at the beginning that we start to become aware of is like yes. even with our food, right? Just how... <laughs> things have been depleted from our soil, um, like what the factory farm industry has mm-hmm. is doing to our environment, to the atmosphere, um, things in our skin. You know, we know that Europe bans so many more chemicals <laughs> than the United States does when it comes to putting yes. things on your skin. They ban more things from your food. But one thing that I don't think that we think about is walking to our home, plopping down on the couch, putting our feet up on the coffee table, um, you know, turning on the TV, like opening the curtains, like where any of this stuff comes or that there was even any corruption or any harm done in the textile industry. So I'm really glad that we're having this conversation because I feel like I knew that there was toxins in that stuff, but I didn't know how deep it went, I guess. It really goes into everything. And, you know, the corruption is incredible. Um, just, I was in New York um, last week and my daughter and I were in the city and I was looking for furniture for a client and she came with me and I ran into CB2, love CB2, right? And I went in and I see that they have a chair and it says responsible wool. And I go crazy when I see that. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing as responsible wool. It doesn't exist. Um, the wool industry is so toxic, so corrupt. I mean, I look at Patagonia and I want to like, oh, I just get so upset. Um, and there's millions of other couples. I shouldn't just be, you know, pointing out Patagonia. But there, there is the, the sheep industry, for example, the pesticides, the amount of pesticides that are put on the sheep and once they, once they um, shear them in order for them not to be filled with bugs is incredible. So you're surrounding yourself when you buy a wool carpet or, um, you know, or or a wool blanket, you're surrounding yourself with tons of pesticides. And of course, it's so unethical. Um, The industry, the poor sheep suffer terribly. And the only reason that the term responsible wool came about was because the sheep industry got busted for the horrific abuse to these animals. People think, oh, they're being sheared. They're fine. They're not. They're just a number. There is no way to in mass quantity to use animals and profit without treating them as an inhuman and humane object. Mm -hmm. So they're also laden with chemicals because that's the way to preserve it. Again, it comes from a living being. So being in CB2, that just upset me so much because you see how the corruption works. You know, Um, so really there's not a part of your home. I mean, we can, if you're pregnant, for example, you want to really think about your bedroom. The bedroom is one of the most important spaces in your home because you spend a third of your life there, most Mm -hmm. of us. Okay. So if you're going to start somewhere, I always say, start with your bedroom. Think about your mattress. Think about your pillows. Think about your paint. Think about your bedding. Think about the bed itself because that's when you sleep at night is when your body is repairing itself. 
So if you're wrapping yourself in sheets, sheets, for example, wrinkle-free sheets soaked in formaldehyde, Mm -hmm. that's the only way they stay wrinkle-free. It's not magic. Yeah. So if you're wrapping yourself in formaldehyde and you're pregnant or you're just, you're not pregnant, that is when your body's repairing itself. You're inhaling those fumes. Your skin is porous. It's going right into your, into your bloodstream. So things like that, we have to start addressing. Yeah. I feel like I, I mean, I didn't know that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I've never bought, um, wrinkle free sheets, thankfully after hearing this. Um, but I, I just baffles me how that stuff is okay. Like how, because, how is it because okay? It's, <laughs> because it's cheap. It's cheap to produce. Yeah. Look, synthetics, synthetics are cheap. Mm-hmm. They're petroleum based. Mm-hmm. They're a lot cheaper to produce than something that's organic and right. not animal based. You know, synthetics contain microplastics, which we all, we've all heard about phthalates, right? Unless you're like under a rock, we've all heard of phthalates, but you're in everything not only fabrics, but in every household product, they say that our bloodstream contains mm-hmm. microplastics. Mm-hmm. And phthalates are so dangerous that there was a study done that found a direct relationship between a mother's exposure to phthalates during pregnancy and changes in the way a baby boy's genitals develop. Mm-hmm. Okay? Um, it affects fertility. It affects neurologically everything. So, so you really have to become your own investigator and you really have to learn to read labels and you can always, you know, not to tout what we do, but you can always go on our site. You can always email us because we have become a resource for information for people, you know? Um, so, so things like latex, even, I mean, I could go on and on, you know, uh, latex mattresses are legal to sell uh, crib mattresses. You can buy a latex crib mattress. That is so dangerous Because many babies and people are allergic to latex, but you don't know if an infant is allergic to latex and they can die with an allergic reaction, but yet they're legal to sell, Mm -hmm. which is terrible. So if you buy a crib mattress for your baby, make sure it's not latex. For adults, it's okay. But of course, only buy organic, natural latex. You do not want to buy something that is not organic and natural because, again, it's petroleum-based and very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's... This is one of those episodes where you can't like... I say this all the time on here and take the information... Like you were saying at the beginning, like, oh, how I would have changed things. Like, just take the information and move forward. Um because it's a lot. Because all of a sudden you're thinking about every single thing in your house, how it's full of yes. toxins and chemicals. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm killing myself and my family. Um, and another thing is it's expensive to change everything all at once. So is there like a certain... like If, if people listening were like, okay, if there's a couple of things that I need to start with, where do I start? Okay. Yes. Because it can be overwhelming. And again, I would start with the bedroom or the nursery Mm -hmm. because really a baby also can sleep, what, 18, 20 hours a day when they're born, right? Um, So you want to work on the nursery and you want to work on your bedroom. And let's say you have a mattress already because I always have naturopedic mattresses because I love them because they're completely non-toxic and they have a certification called the GOTS certification, which you should write down. Because that's an important certification. It's called GOTS, G-O-T-S. The GOTS certification stands for Global Organic Textile Standard. And it's like the Cadillac of the certifications. It when, uh, when a fabric or a product has a GOTS certification, it shows that they are organic and they contain very little chemicals. So it's a great certification. So when you're looking for a mattress, if you have the budget, Look for one that's GOT certified. Very important. Look for one that does not contain wool or leather. There are a lot of mattresses that still that are GOT certified. It can be confusing. It's GOT certified, but it contains wool. You don't want to go near wool because wool contains pesticides, even though they might say it was cleaned and rinsed and this and that. It's not. And I always say it's bad juju. You don't want to surround yourself with bad energy. Mm-hmm. And animal-based products are not only toxic, but they're a result of tragedy and despair. And I am a big believer in energy. I I believe that you need to bring things into your home that are positive and come from a good place. I even will only buy from vendors 
for clients where I like the people and I like what they represent because I feel that we're all connected, you know? Mm -hmm. So your mattress should be non-animal based and have a good certification. Now, let's say you're like, oh my God, I just bought an expensive mattress. I can't return this thing. I, you know, but I, I, I can't afford to buy a new one. Then get a mattress topper. Get a GOTS certified mattress topper that is not animal based. And that's a way to at least prevent direct contact with the mattress. Mm -hmm. And that should just cost a lot less money. So that's something you can do. I'm just writing. I'm writing so many things down. (laughs) Okay. Okay. All right. So if you've been listening to the show for a while, you know that I am obsessed with Best Fiends. I absolutely love doing puzzles. I love games and it's a way for me just to kind of take my mind off things, engage my brain, have a, not just be talking to a one-year-old. Um, and to be able to have some fun and create and solve these puzzles. Um, you actually play through a storyline and there's good guys, not so good guys. Um, and you get to grow these different characters and, um, and unpack different levels. There's like always these side adventures, um, kind of like these side levels that you can do for like the different characters that you have, the different fiends, um, or you can like stay on the path to keep going and they never run out of levels. They have so many that they continue to add on and there's always a fresh challenge waiting for me whenever I need a little mental pick me up. So right now download Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. So now let's go on to... The sh- so let's talk about, we'll keep going back from, from adults to babies. So for babies, do not get a latex mattress. Make sure the mattress is waterproof. Again, if you, if you um, subscribe to our newsletter or even just um, go to our YouTube channel, I have so many videos on that stuff, or just follow us on Vegan Design or Demar Design. I'm just constantly giving information all about all this stuff, okay? But... So let's say now for the crib, you don't want to get a latex mattress for the baby. You want to make sure that the mattress is waterproof. Believe it or not, some mattresses are not waterproof and they're a fortune because if it's not waterproof, you have all that that bacteria, the wetness going through the mattress, which creates mold and babies sleep with with their nose and mouth right on that mattress. And that's the last thing you want your baby to be inhaling right? Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure it's waterproof and you want to make sure that it's not a plastic waterproof mattress. You want to make sure that again, it's a God certified mattress, which is why, again, I love a company like Naturepedic. I don't have stock in the company. I just love the company. (laughs) Um, So they have beautiful waterproof mattress covers. They have great crib mattresses. Okay. So next that's our mattress. Now let's go on to our sheets because we're going to focus on the bedroom. If that's, if that's good yeah, for you. Yeah. Okay. So onto the sheets, same thing. Again, I'm going to keep repeating God certified. You want to get God's certified sheets because if you get an organic sheet, like they sell in a lot of places, babies, organic sheets, right? Wonderful. But organic doesn't mean that it's not toxic. Mm-hmm. You can have a 100% organic cotton, smushy, delicious set of sheets for your baby or for yourself. But if it's printed and it doesn't say God certified, the print most likely is toxic. So I related to buying an organic apple. If an apple comes from an organic farm, but yet they put red dye number two on it to make it look red and, and, and crispier looking and more delicious looking, is it still really organic? No. no. Same thing with the furniture industry. So if you get a printed sheet, make sure it's God certified because that will tell you that it's organic and that it has very, very low toxins. So be careful of that with the, with your baby, because there's so many, there's so much false advertising out there. It's crazy. And there's an expression called greenwashing. I don't know mm-hmm. if you've heard that expression, Elizabeth. Yeah. I mean, again, it's like, I hear it mostly in the, in the food industry, right? When they started being like, oh, this is all natural, or this is gluten-free, or this is whatever. It's like, that doesn't, mean that it's necessary, necessarily good for you. Or even in the cleaning industry, there's a lot of companies that um, put things on their labels to make it seem like it's okay um, when it's actually not. 
Right. So in the food industry, it's like saying like that oatmeal is gluten-free. Well, oatmeal is always gluten-free. <laughs> right, exactly. But you know what? <laughs> Someone who doesn't really know that's like, wow, it's gluten-free. So it's the same thing in the furniture industry. Yeah. You know, someone can say this organic, you know, or, or they can see a uh, down-free duvet cover. Meanwhile, it's filled with petroleum-based, you know, crap. Mm-hmm. So it's like, but the person's like, oh, down-free, hypoallergenic, that's great. But meanwhile, it's filled with chemicals. Yeah. But the average consumer doesn't know that. So you have to, you have to become wise. And it's, it is a lot of information. So we're just going to focus on the bedroom. Okay. So those are your sheets. Your pillows, you do not want to get down. Down is not only another, again, there's no animal-based industry that's, that's kind. It's a horrific, horrific industry for the animals and the workers. There's most of these countries where, these, where they do live plucking, um, there's no regulations for the workers. And their conditions are horrific and the animals and humans suffer equally. Um, just for an example, the average pillow uh, takes the live plucking of six geese. Just the average small pillow. Live plucking is, uh, you can compare that to us pulling the hair out of our head. Mm -hmm. And geese get plucked several times a year. If they survive, many of them just die from the shock and the trauma and the pain. Um, So down, another contains tremendous amount of pesticides. When wet, down gets, again, mold because it doesn't dry. You know, if it's encased in something, it just sits there, the moisture. And many people have an allergic reaction to down. And it has the weirdest name, but it's called Feather Duvet Lung. It, don't ask me why. It's, it's, it's the strangest name. Mm-hmm. And basically, someone can develop scar tissue on the insides of their lungs from having a reaction to the down. So with pillows, you want to, for babies, I know we don't use pillows, but for adults, you want to stick with something like K-pop, which is rubber, or I've gotten really into buckwheat. Hmm. And I have videos on all these things, Elizabeth, if you'd like me to send them to you. Yeah, um, I would love like a good pillow recommendation because I feel like yeah. that's something that my husband and I constantly, like for yes. a year, he's been like, I need a new pillow and we've bought different ones, tried different ones and he like can't find one that he loves. Right. Now for ad- adults, you can use b- buckwheat, which is like, it has the holes. It's kind of weird. Um, I was in Japan a couple of years pre-COVID and um, they give that in the hotels. That's the standard pillow with a regular pillow because that's just what most Japanese people use for sleeping. And it has buckwheat holes. It's almost like little coffee beans. Mm-hmm. And, a, and I slept what, on it the first night because I read that it was very good for if you get hot when you're sleeping. And I do with my age, I get very hot at night. And also for your neck, it's very good because it conforms to your neck and you can move it around. So the first night I, I heard the noise of the buckwheat, you know, squishing. Mm-hmm. But then I really liked it after that. And it's completely organic, completely non-toxic. And the other option, of course, is an organic latex pillow. Organic latex for adults. Because that does not clean. And now there's, there's another certification for latex, which is called, okay, mm-hmm. the GALS certification. So you have GOTS, Global Organic Textiles. And then you have GOLS, Global Organic Latex Standard. So if you find something with the gall standard for latex, that's terrific because it's organic and it has basically very little toxins. I have a question about um, nursery products. So when I was decorating or just getting stuff for my daughter's nursery, everyone's like, you need things that are green guard gold certified. Does that Mm. mean anything or is that a greenwashing thing? Uh, It's another corrupt organization, but um, you're seeing it now in all these stores. I mean, it's better than not having a certification, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's better than the others. It's not a great certification, but it's okay. I mean, if you have a choice between that and nothing else, I would definitely get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're seeing that in all pottery barn restoration, all those stores are having that now it's, they're still toxic. Um, but they're a little better than the other products. It's hard. It's hard, you know, but yeah, right. I would go for that one. Mm-hmm. Um, what else we have paint? Yes. I think a lot of us know now about VOCs, right? Volatile organic compounds. You see now paints that say no VOCs or low VOCs. You know, paint is the same thing that when you put paint on, you paint a wall, right? 
And then when, you know how they would always say, uh, years ago, they used to say, don't go in the room for a couple of days so the smell evaporates. Um, and those are the volatile organic compounds. Those are the gases that are coming off of the paint as it's drying. So unfortunately, you might not smell it anymore, but guess what? It doesn't dissipate. Mm-hmm. It can take years and years for those, those gases to go away. And sometimes they don't even go away. So you want to find a paint that has low or no VOCs. The best paint to use are lime paints, which are kind of now coming out in the market again. That's in Europe, they use lime paints. It has that very textured look. It's like an unfinished look. It's a very beautiful look. And it takes a little bit more work to apply, but it's completely non-toxic. If not, you want to just look for a paint that says low VOC or no VOC. And let's say you're renting an apartment or your home already just had a fresh coat of paint and you didn't know about VOCs. Then you can buy a primer that I forget the name of as we're speaking. I can send it to you. Um, That you put on your walls. You can buy it on Amazon. You put that on your walls and then you can repaint. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes... The act of scrubbing off the paint can more more of the VOCs can kind of be stirred up. So sometimes they say if you want to scrub off the paint, you know um, that can be good, but then you're emitting a lot of gases again. Yeah. So I'll send you the name of that primer. It's um, I can't remember the name of it, um, but it, it's good and it's not toxic. And that's your paint, and you know. Um, as far as lighting goes for spaces and for, for nurseries, you know, for nurseries, you want to use soft lighting. You want to use um, things that will make a baby feel very comforted and want to be sleepy. Mm-hmm. So you don't, you never want to use fluorescent lights in, in any of your sleeping areas. Fluorescent lights give off a noise that we really can't hear sometimes, or we can, that's very disruptive to what's called our circadian rhythm, which Mm -hmm. is our body's natural way of putting ourselves to sleep. Circadian uh, rhythm is we we produce our own melatonin, you know, that makes us sleepy. Mm -hmm. And certain, that's why they should say to not have your, you know, your computer by your bed or your phone, because it it emits um, energy that disrupts our sleep and it affects us. So we can't naturally produce melatonin. So it's the same for babies. You want to be careful what you put in their spaces as far as technology and lighting. Yeah. I feel Um, like there's just like so many things. (laughs) Yes, I know. I know it's overwhelming. I'm like filling your head. So look, look at it this way. The mattress, the sheets, Mm -hmm. the blanket, organic cotton, God certified, simple. Yeah. The paint, no VOCs. Mm -hmm. The rugs, you don't want wool. Mm -hmm. You want to go with an organic cotton. Area rug, you do that with babies because that's also you don't want that dust. I'm not a I'm not a believer in you know if if wall to wall carpeting in the baby space, I'd rather put an area rug that's organic cotton, let it get messed up because with all the throw up and go that comes out of babies, <laughs> and then right and then two years later you throw it out or a year later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well that's my big thing. Um, so as I was telling you before we started the podcast, we bought an older home, we redid the outside. Um, we're going to start doing some stuff on the inside. We've done a little bit, but we have carpet and I despise it. (laughs) I hate carpet so much because I also learned like how much dust and toxins that carpet collects and uh, things like that. So um, I, but I feel like even just like the whole ripping out process is probably going to like stir up toxins as well. It will, but I'm, but most carpets contain flame retardants. Mm Mm-hmm which really stinks. Yeah. And for babies with the dust and the allergies, oh, I don't know. It's a tough call. Maybe what you can do is place an area rug over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Until we you know? replace it, because we're for sure going to replace it just because yeah. it's ugly carpet. Yeah. <laughs> Again, if you, if you can put like a barrier between the toxins and your skin, mm-hmm. that's better than nothing. Right. So maybe just find a nice big area rug, a, a God-certified cotton rug, 
And again, we, on our shop, we have like all this stuff. We, I tried to make it easy for everyone. I never want anyone to say, I can't find something. So that's why we started our shop. Mm-hmm. It's all Amazon products and easy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. But that's what you should do. You should, um, if you can't rip out the carpet, always think about if you can't rip it out, paint over it, whatever, what kind of barrier can I put in between it that's mm-hmm. safe? And that's a way to go when, especially when you're on a budget. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. I feel like I, I have to put a rug. Right, a rug. I have to move. You, <laughs> I know. Know, Elizabeth, you have to sell your house. <laughs> Let's just start over. <laughs> just knock the house down. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. When you're no, remodeling, I mean, I... you feel that way sometimes though, when you're remodeling stuff. Yeah. Cause I, I told my husband, like with some of the stuff we're going to do, he's like, why don't we redo the basement? Then we'll stay down there while we're redoing the upstairs. And I was like, no way. I'm like, we're going to move in with your parents while we're redoing it. Cause I'm not living in the, the dust, the whatever that's going to go on with the remodeling. Like I'm not living through that. Like we are leaving the house <laughs> and Smart. then Smart. we can come back in because I can't, like, I'm not gonna just even we demolitioned our basement and the amount of dust that still we get I'm like I dust and the next day like we've cleaned our vents we've changed our filters we've done like everything and like every two days I have to dust and we did this like a year and a half ago it's impossible I mean to live through a remodel and to uh, it's funny I've had a couple clients over the years who've done that and I don't know how they did it they lived in the basement yeah no and (laughs) <laughs> it's it's awful. It's just not only, you know, is it bad for you physically, but mentally it's bad for you. It's just, there's nothing good about it. And mm-hmm. I think that's smart. Even if you can't even speak to your in-laws, I think you're better off living with your in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, luckily I, I have a great, I have great in-laws, so um, it wouldn't be too bad. But um, yeah, I just, it's, it's hard. And also I feel like the hard thing is like you were saying that, um, the, the the products that we tend to buy are cheaper because they but they come at a cheaper cost the harm of animals the harm of humans the mistreatment of animals the mistreatment of of the workers um so replacing these things or doing them the way that you'd want to does take time because it might take more because it takes more money so i feel like finding those things um, is a bigger investment. So it might be more of a long-term change, but I'm glad that we're getting those tips of like, Hey, if you can get a mattress topper or sheets or a new pillow, like just these small things make a difference. Yes, they do. They really do. And like, stay away from leather. I mean, that's easy. Stay away from leather. I mean, the average tannery worker in India dies at the age of 55. Oh my gosh. It's terrible. You see the child laborers in India, they are standing in pools, pools of toxic chemicals, barefoot and up to their knees. All that waste runs out to the local rivers mm-hmm. and streams where poor people bathe themselves and fish. The fish look like something, they look like aliens, the fish. Yeah. Because they're so toxic. So, you know, and and like I say, we're all connected. And you know, you hold so much power with every nickel you spend. I don't think people realize that. Mm-hmm. When when corporations see that people are not, not purchasing things anymore, they have to make change. And that's mm-hmm. slowly what's happening in the industry. That's happening everywhere. I mean, look at now vegan leather. I think I think Ferrari and Mercedes now are coming out with vegan leather in their char- in their uh, cars. Mm-hmm. Look at all the look at all the couture fashion houses that have stopped using fur. They're not doing it because they're nice and kind. They're doing it because consumers are demanding it. Yeah. And that's the only reason they're doing it. It's not because they're these great companies. Right. Because it's all about the bottom dollar for huge corporations. Mm-hmm. So if you're seeing it in the fashion industry slowly but surely, I mean furniture, it's the same leather that you use for leather jacket that you use for leather coat. And, you know, years ago, I used to, I used to love to do nurseries and playrooms with big leather beanbags for kids thinking I was, wow, look at me what I'm designing for these. Now I'm like, oh my God, I was literally like cocooning these children in these toxins. You know, leather is so toxic that I read that when they discovered the Titanic, it had been in the water for over 75 years. 
one of the few remaining things that were still intact were all the leather items. Oh, wow. Because they were so preserved loaded with, with, yeah, they were so preserved <laughs> with all the chemicals. Yeah. Um, the one thing I remember uh, that, have you heard of the non-toxic munchkin? No. Oh, okay. She came on the podcast a while ago and she talks a lot about like buying non-toxic for your kids with toys and, and a lot of different things. And she's like, I know that this can sound overwhelming, but the good thing to remind yourself of is that our bodies are made to detox. So our bodies do really well at detoxing, but we also like need to be conscious of what we're surrounding them with. Cause when we're being bombarded with toxins from our makeup, our food, our furniture, like from every which corner, we're not really giving them a break. Um, but I feel like with the overwhelming amount of information, when you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to burn my house down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> remind yourself that your body's made to detox, open up your windows, air out the house, dust, vacuum, and slowly make the changes that you can. And, you know, here's something also that, that along the lines of what she said, which I kind of relates you do do the best you can. Right. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. And also, if you live in a home that was built prior to 19, in the 60s, mm-hmm. they're much less toxic than the homes built today. Really? Yes, because years ago, homes weren't, everything now is being mass produced. Right. Fast, 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 fast. So in order to get something fast, it's got to be cheap. It's got to be, it, it, you know, it's filled with te- chemicals. There, there's, there's nothing humane about it. It's just getting it out there fast and cheap. Mm-hmm. So, so the structure of the homes are much more toxic today. Whereas prior the 1960s, there was much healthier. They didn't use it, half as many chemicals. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, but again, now with furniture and decor, I always say be careful with recycled items or donated items that friends and family give you. You know, because years ago, also when it came to furniture, you know, there was no, um, there were no regulations, so things could be painted with lead paint, for example. Right. Right. So I always say with, you know, with donated items, if they mean something to you, you know, put them high up on the wall where a baby can't get to them, you know, but be careful with cribs and things like that, because, you know, the laws are much more stringent regarding, uh, you know, slats and this and that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if I just confused you more. No, no. <laughs> Cause I, I know, um, whenever we go to the pediatrician, they ask what county we live in. And then they even, they ask, I think about like your home, because depending on where you live in Chicago, certain counties, you're more, they do lead testing here. Um, They'll, it's like required to get your kid tested for lead levels, depending on where you live. Yeah. So, um, and I also know like certain homes built before a certain time, the paint did use lead. Right, Um, right. Yes, they did use lead, but the structures were much, uh, much less toxic. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yes, it's an education. It's an it's 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 a lot. I hope I didn't confuse everyone more. No, than, no. You know. Is there? Do you know companies? I guess if um, somebody's like building a home, are there people that you can hire that, um, like the architecture or the contractor or whatever that's going to know what they're doing if you're like I want to build as non-toxic yes, yes, of a home. I actually have I actually work with because I work with a healthy home consultant. And so when someone's building a new home, he and 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 my business will typically come in together and we help the homeowner decide on everything from flooring to glues and adhesives and what goes behind the walls. So there are people that deal just with the structural, the construction avenue of it, yes. Mm-hmm. And then there are people like myself who, who are at that extra layer of, okay, now that we have the structure, what about the paint? What about this? What about the flooring? All that stuff. So, yes, if you look up healthy home consultants. Um, but you have to make sure they're good. Right. Because a lot of them, like everything, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of slick marketing out there. <laughs> Greenwashing, right? I mean, we see it. Yeah, greenwashing with everything. Exactly. Oh my gosh, I was at the store the other day and I don't even remember what I was looking at. I think it was, I don't remember what I was looking for, but there was, I was not buying hot dogs, but hot dogs were in my eyesight. 
And on one of the hot dog packages, it said something about like gluten-free hot dogs. I'm like, why would there be gluten <laughs> in hot dogs? Like, exactly. it's just, yeah. The, or the all natural. And when you right. look at all natural, it's like when it's like in natural flavors, well, one of the natural flavors is the vanilla flavoring, which actually comes from a beaver's anus sac, oh, anal sac. No, I believe that. I believe that. <laughs> so it's like when it's, whenever anything says like, and other flavors or natural flavors. I'm always like, what is that? Like, what are these other natural flavors? Because poop is natural. Did they flavor it with poop? Like, I don't know. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's like, I mean, years ago, and I think sometimes they still do it like gelatin, like Tootsie Rolls, I think, right. were made with hooves, the hooves of cows, right? That's how they got the gelatin. Oh, wow. It's natural. Right. It's the hooves of cows, right? Right. So it's, it's the same thing. It's like, um, I just saw something when I, one of the shows responsibly sourced leather. Now, mm-hmm. okay, I can understand people like being ignorant enough to say sheep, oh, maybe they don't hurt the sheep, which of course they do. But leather, it's you're skinning, the cow is dead. How is it responsible? Right, sourced? right. But you know, people that also has to do with appeasing people's guilt, you know? Right, right, I know. Um, yeah. Another thing that I recently learned is when they say like antibiotic-free chicken, it's actually illegal to put antibiotics in the chickens now, but they still use that as a marketing technique to make you feel like it's like right. being well, treated better. Well, I think I think the majority of antibiotics sold in this country are sold to farms for all their animals. Hmm. You look that up, yeah, because they're the biggest purchaser of antibiotics because... They just load these animals up with antibiotics, which of course you're ingesting. Same right, thing with right. fish, you know. Uh, all fish now contain microplastics. Right. So whatever fish you're eating or feeding your kids contain plastic. It's, it's you know what, you can get yourself crazy. Right. That's what I was just going to say because I just feel like with, it's like at every turn, <laughs> it's like, man, like how how do I make a difference? And it is taking small steps and um, knowing better and doing better and... Um, making small changes um yes is is impactful baby steps yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i would love for you to tell us um cuz i mean i feel like we could talk about this all day there's so much to go over um i know before you mentioned kind of your website and resources if you could re-say those for us and tell us about the courses that you offer um and people listening who are like oh my gosh I need to redo my kid nursery or I have a baby on the way. I'd love to use what Deborah says, like her tips or the products. Where can people connect at? Terrific. So I have two websites, um, Damari Design and VeganDesign.org. And I think something that would be interesting for your listeners is we have a course on non-toxic and cruelty-free nursery design. And I have five experts on the course and we go from everything from mattresses to paint to even cleaning products that I suggest. And of course, I do a whole section on my design tips on how to decorate a nursery. You know, like how do you do it? How do you, how do you start and make it really cute and great and all that kind of stuff? Mm-hmm. And for your listeners, I know if they use Mama 25 for the course, uh, we'll give 25% off of the course. We awesome. also offer something, uh, we offer vir- virtual design services, which are really inexpensive. It's a couple hundred bucks. And it's, I love our virtual design services because we, we include so much. So we could, for example, do your bedroom or your nursery or living room or your kitchen, one room, and we do the layout. We actually give you all the links to retailers. We have a Zoom call with you. We'll have another Zoom call if needed. And we get to know your taste and what your goals are for this space. And we do everything as healthy and naturally, but natural, good natural yeah. uh, for this space. And those are our virtual design services. So um, I think that's a really good place to start if you guys want to check it out. And if you go onto our sites also, we have tip sheets and this and that. Mm -hmm. But I think that the course is awesome. And I think the virtual design services are really great. And I'm really happy and pleased with them. And people seem to really like them. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I I feel like that's where my husband and I struggle is we have no idea what we want to do with our house. He Neither he or I are like... We're creative in different ways, <laughs> but when it comes, like he did a great job at redesigning the outside of our house. It turned out beautifully. Um, but when it comes to the inside, like we have zero idea. 
And it's so tough because we're like, we kind of want to make it a little homey now because we don't know when we're going to remodel, but also we don't want to make like drastic, you know, I don't want to paint a wall black, um, (laughs) not knowing what we're going to end up doing once we actually get new flooring and we're knocking out a ceiling, a ceiling and a wall and all sorts of stuff. So, um, it's like so hard to know for us. I like, I see people, one of, one of our, somebody I've met through the podcast, she's always taking on these like home projects and redesigning stuff. And I'm like, how do you have the vision for this? (laughs) Like, I'm like, (laughs) I have zero idea what to do with my house. (laughs) Right. So that's why like, it's, it's hard to start. You don't want to screw up. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think the virtual design is great because look, our typical design services are expensive. It's expensive to hire a designer because we do a lot of work on the back end, but virtual design, I mean, we're doing so nicely with it because we really, we really hold the person's hand through the process and really help them with all those decisions. And it's, it's really been great because it's, everyone has their expertise, you know, mm-hmm. like your husband can be great doing the outside, but he doesn't know anything about the inside, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Except for I'll send him something. Like I found this cork flooring that I'm like, this would be really great for the basement. Like it doesn't have like this other stuff in it. And he's like, I don't know about that. And I'm like, come on, babe. <laughs> <laughs> because the thing that I learned about cork is that the trees regrow. So Yes, cork is a very, very sustainable product. Right. So when they're taking the cork and and making this, the trees are regenerating themselves. And I'm like, that's so cool. <laughs> I I think if correct me if I'm wrong, but I I saw a video on it once. If I can remember, I think they actually just use like almost this huge outer bark of the mm-hmm. cork, and I think then it just keeps continuing. It's like bamboo. Bamboo grows. I read three feet a day, which I can't believe that. I don't know if I'm making that up, but that's what I read. Like it's such a sustainable product, but yet you also have to be careful with bamboo because because it's a harder product. They they sometimes have to use chemicals to soften it. Oh, but okay. cork, but cork is yeah, it's a very sustainable product. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So I got to try to sway him on a few things, but <laughs> we'll see. Um, if you go, is there like a place like if you go to I know you have some things in your shop as well, but is there like, if you go to the GOT certification, is there like a website where they just list yes, all their products? and it's overwhelming. Oh, okay. And I don't suggest yeah. you go to it because <laughs> it's overwhelming for me. <laughs> so, yeah. It's hard. There's no one place. There's no one place. That's why I think like we're so much in demand because there's no one place. We kind of like consolidate everything. People say, what store can I buy everything non-toxic? I'm like, it doesn't exist. What store can I buy everything cruelty-free? It doesn't exist. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a little here, a little there, a little there. Right, right. Exactly. It is hard to to figure that out. Um, well, yeah. great. Well, I'm going to put links to everything um, in the show notes so people are going to know where to connect with you and uh, where they can take the course, where they can find your shop and all of that great Terrific. stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Like I said at the beginning, I have some major changes to make. Uh My pillow is a down pillow that I've had for years. So now all I can think about is the fact that there's probably mold inside of it and I'm sleeping on it every single night. So ordering new pillows is going to be a must ASAP. And like I said, Vito just has such a hard time finding a good pillow. (laughs) We've gone through several and he just like can't find one that he loves. So I'm going to look at the Nature Pediatric website and see if they have pillows on there. Um, or the pillow K pack. I'm interested in that buckwheat pillow. I feel like I would be into it. I don't know if Vito would though, but I just, I (laughs) now every time I go to sleep and I can't sleep without this pillow, it's like so comfortable. Um, when I travel, I bring it with me. I mean like road trip wise, like not on flights. Um, because I just sleep so much better with my pillow. But now I'm like, it for sure probably has mold in it. And now that I know that these geese are tortured and the workers are have not having like humane working conditions, I'm like, okay, I can't, I can't sleep on this anymore. Uh, so I'll have to let you know whether I get the 
buckwheat pillow or if I get um, the nature the nature pedic one. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that was it was definitely interesting to hear. And I'm wanting to start decorating Jovi's room. I have the nursery where she's at now, and we're going to keep that set up for the new baby um, since we did everything kind of gender neutral in it since we don't know what we're having. Um, now I want to decorate a different room for Jovi to move into. Uh, I know that we have time because like the baby is not going to be here for four more months and then um, the baby will be in our room for who knows how long. Um, so we have time, but I'd like to like slowly make the changes. So even just like starting out painting the room and um, slowly getting some pieces for it. So I'm glad that I got a lot of this information between her and the non-toxic munchkin. I feel like I'll be able to find like a lot of good stuff, um, to like over the next year, <laughs> slowly make the transition over. Um, I mean, we're not getting like a new bed or anything. Jovi's will last her for a little while. Um, but yeah, it's, I feel like there's just so much information in there that, <laughs> that um, that was good to hear. So, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Like I said, make sure that you are staying tuned in next week to hear all about joy. All right. Love you guys. Bye. If you want to be the most interesting person at the cocktail party, well, hop on over and listen to the Brain Candy Podcast. Our award-winning content will have you laughing while you're learning. We read all the best articles, books, and studies, and keep up with new TV shows, documentaries, and pop culture. And then we cram it all into two shows a week. Conspiracy theories, cannibal rabbits, unsolved mysteries, the history of the Walkman. There's something for everyone. The Brain Candy Podcast. Find our link in the show notes. Or simply search for the Brain Candy Podcast on your podcast app.